Welcome back to another season of Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the Futures League presented by 78 Sports. I'm Owen Shadrick alongside Matt Ferreira, and we are back here for season eight of the podcast. It's been an incredible seven seasons. We are ready for season eight here in our off season. Plenty of episodes coming at you for the next couple of months, and uh, we can't wait. Very excited to jump right back into it. It's going to be great content coming in the off season. Yeah, great content is coming your way. And it's coming your way at our annual Adam Keenan Legacy Golf Tournament, which will take place on Friday, October 13th. The schedule for that has been released online, but we're going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, Of course, this this tournament is in honor of Adam Keenan, who passed away tragically a couple years ago. And it's great that we continue to do this every year for him. The tournament is taking place at... Cypress Keys Golf Course in Boylston, Mass. So the directions for that you can find on our website. The event schedule for those who are attending, 9.30 a.m. is registration. 10.30 is a lunch being available for pickup. 11 a.m. is a shotgun start, and there will be a cocktail reception uh, to follow. So be sure to sign up. And if you're a sponsor looking to sponsor the event, take a look on our website, too. Plenty of information on there. Uh, we're really excited about this, and and we're excited to continue celebrating Adam Keenan. An amazing event that I am looking forward to personally. Along with that, the all-league teams for the Futures League have been released, with the first team featuring Pitcher of the Year, Francis Ferguson, Player of the Year, Dean Ferrara, and Relief Pitcher of the Year, Brian Hart, while the second team features Playoff MVP, Johnny Knox, as well as both as well as both of our top pro prospects, Will Fosberg and Dylan Vieg. Yeah, just an incredible season in the Futures League, and those guys all earned uh, those honors. And we're, again, congratulations to all of the guys that were named to the uh, Futures League teams, both first and second. More news in the Futures League. We want to reaffirm that the Brockton Rocks are back for another season in the Futures League. But a big announcement in Brockton is the fact that the – the city of Brockton and Campanelli stadium will host a frontier league team in 2024. It's just more baseball here coming to new England. We're really excited to be able to share that, that field in that city with that new frontier league team. So congratulations to Brockton on earning that. We also had another futures leaguer heading to the postseason as sale Freilich and the Milwaukee brewers officially clinched their spot in the 2023 playoffs. So congratulations to Sal and the brewers who I guess we're rooting for with no New England teams in it, sort of. Yeah. Well, eh, we'll see. Anyway. we got Matt, some other Futures League alum in the uh, playoffs as well, so yeah. we're going to have to spread around some love. Ta- speaking of which, Coach Kevin Murphy has now been named the new pitching coach, pitching coach at Amherst College, so congrats to him and hope he does an amazing job this year. Yeah, Kevin Murphy, not the only manager uh, getting another opportunity here in college ball as Chad Shade is going to be an assistant coach at Nichols, the Futures League factory, as some people have nicknamed it. Uh, Congratulations to him and to Kevin. Um, Yeah, it's been an interesting couple of weeks here since we last recorded. Uh, You can find our interview with Dean Ferreira and Francis Ferguson uh, a couple weeks weeks back here on our channels. Uh, But this season... Our guest was actually a member of one of those all futures league teams. We mentioned it was first team in the outfield. It's Shane McNamara. He's been on the Nashville silver Knights for the past three years. And it was great to talk to him about many things, including his impact this season, his time at Eastern Nazarene and Matt, he's entering the portal. He is. And maybe if you keep listening, you'll get a leak. Yeah, we we got some we got some futures league uh, insider information here about where Shane would like to play next. But you have to tune into this episode to figure it out. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for tuning with in with us all summer long. We hope that you do the same here for the off season episodes. And uh, Matt, if you got nothing else, I think it's time to hear from Shane. Take it away. All right, Shane, let's hear it. We are honored to welcome our first guest here on our off-season season eight of Back to the Futures. It's Shane McNamara of the Nashua Silver Knights. Shane, how you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? We're doing well. And I just mentioned it. We're into the off-season here, but you had a great summer in Nashua. How did you feel coming out of your summer? Definitely 
definitely a few mixed feelings coming off of the 2022 season. Uh, was Didn't end the season the way we wanted to, but definitely learned and met a lot of great guys along the way. And you personally, you had an amazing season. You were named to the first team for the Futures League as an outfielder. What did that mean to you? Um, That meant a lot because – this is my third year in the league, and I definitely worked really hard for that and um, had to make a lot of adjustments over the off seasons just to, you know, work, get that first team. I mean, there's a lot of great players in the Futures League, and I feel blessed to be the first team. And you were atop of the leaderboards in many of the stats, including leading the league in RBIs, hitting 286, and you were top five with 55 hits and you had five home runs this year. How did it feel to contribute in so many ways to the team this season? Definitely felt amazing. I mean, that's really all you want to do. You just want to go in every single game and help contribute to win, and that's the goal for every single game is just do something to help the team to win. And I uh, I guess I did that with the bat a little bit, did it with the glove, but however it was necessary that day, I just tried to do my best. And one other stat that jumped out at us when we were looking at your stats this season was 192 at-bats, which is second in the league. So no doubt you got your reps in. How do you believe that's going to help you as you head into uh, your next year of school? Well, I 192 at-bats, that's even more at-bats that I got during school. So that's a ton of at-bats and a ton of reps, and I definitely think I needed it too. So um, it's going to help me because I was able to – just, I mean, I, I got a ton of at-bats, so I was able to learn a lot more about myself and about my swing, and I definitely think that's that's going to help into the offseason and then into the next one, upcoming season. Yeah, certainly. It was good to see you get all those reps. And we talked about your awards on the field, but one award that you won off the field was an Adam, Adam Keenan Scholarship Award, which is awarded to players who show outstanding attitude, character, and sportsmanship that is synonymous with Adam Keenan's legacy. What did that mean to you to get that award and earn that scholarship? That that it means so much. I mean, Adam Keenan, I, he obviously people really look up to him, and um, obviously, I that's just a prestigious award that you know I feel I feel grateful for and I feel blessed for, and I'm just extremely thankful that I was I was nominated for it for my team. Yeah, and Adam will be celebrated on October 13th at the annual Adam Keenan Legacy Golf Tournament. What does it say about the culture of the league that all these people are going to come together and support this foundation and and Adam Keenan himself each and every year? I mean, it's it says a lot. I mean, it obviously says what legacy he left and obviously the people that miss him very much and want to just remember him and get together and you know what I'm saying? I have a great I have a great time with that golf tournament and celebration of him. So that that obviously says a lot about this league and it says great things. And we talk about the golf tournament. We've seen you swing a bat on the field. What's it like swinging a club? How are we how are we with that? <laughs> <laughs> I uh I love golf and I I don't golf all the time, but I've probably golfed like five times this year all after the season and um I can crush a golf ball, but just the fact that it's going to go straight, we don't know. So, but I, I love playing golf and I, sure I can hit one a mile, but they don't always go straight. <laughs> don't they all? No. Another season in Nashua is done. This was your third year there. What was it like to play all three years in Nashua? Oh, so special. I mean, it's so close to home too. So I kind of felt like I was playing uh, with my, like, I was playing for home, you know what I mean? So I, it meant a lot, and um, I was extremely blessed. My family was able to come to a lot of the games, and I met so many great players and just great great people these last three years over in Nashville, all the way from the coaches to the players and fans and the front office. So the list goes on, and I was just, I'm just extremely thankful, and I've learned so much about myself and my game playing in Nashua. So something I'll, I'll – uh, I'll never forget. Yeah, you played in Nashua all season, but in late July you were playing in Vermont with a lot of other great Futures League players in the All-Star game. What was your time like in Vermont, and what did it mean to you to be named an All-Star? Definitely meant a lot, and um, it, it was a great game. I mean, we there was a lot of great players there, and 
we got the whole pro day and then we did the home run derby and then we got the, the all-star game and you know i was re- i was really happy that we won the all-star game and um that was a really good experience i'm just thankful for it all i definitely learned a lot and uh thankful and you also participated in the home run derby what was your strategy going into the derby <laughs> uh strategy um just try to be a little consistent and try not to like gas out a little bit because it the three minutes is longer than than you think just straight up swinging a bat so i was trying to like pace myself just a little bit but i i was in the home run derby in 2022 and i don't i didn't do bad but i didn't i didn't do good really so i figured i'd just do what i think is best and this year's one and i actually worked out pretty well and i was able to make the finals and and then just came just came up short. It was really close, but it is what it is. It's just a home run derby, so I, I I really just have fun in those. I'm I'm no no stress about the home run derby because hey, that doesn't really go towards my stats or anything like that. So or or the win loss record. So I didn't really. I was just having fun and just tried to go out there and hit them over the fence. Simple it is. Simple it is. It is. Does that ever affect your swing? Because I know a lot of people, especially in the major leagues, abstain from the home run derby because they they think it kind of screws up their rhythm and their swing. Do you ever feel that way? No. You know what's so weird is that in 2022, when I did the home run derby, after that, after the home run derby for the rest of the season, I think my batting average must have gone up like 30 points because I was being more consistent hitting. And the same exact thing happened this year. I think after the home run derby, I came off of the home run derby my next 14 at bats. I had like seven hits or something like that. So I don't, maybe it makes my swing better. I don't know what, I don't know what, how, but it, I actually liked doing the home run derby the other year because I started swinging the bat really well after in game. So, and the same exact thing happened this year. So I don't really see how it, if anything, it improved my swing somehow. So. Well, good. We got to get you more home run derbies then. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And among the accolades that you have in the Futures League, you were also a 2022 champion. There were a lot of heroes in that series and in that playoffs, but you had an incredibly underrated playoffs, hitting 474, nine hits, four doubles. What did it mean to make such a meaningful contribution and help the Knights win it all? Oh, I mean, it means everything, really. I uh, that's all. That's that was the that's the one goal when you go into a season is to win a championship, and when you contribute to do that, you definitely feel really good. Um, obviously that's, you know, in the sun, in the summer, late in the summer, the season's almost coming to an end, you know, it's been a long summer and then you go out and complete your final goal. It just, it feels amazing. And I, um, what a great group of guys that was. And I'm just truly really thankful that I was on that team and I contributed to, you know, a championship. It felt amazing. Hold on. We'll get right back to back to the futures, but first we want to share a message from our friends at 78 sports. Do you have kids playing baseball or softball? We all know practice time is limited, especially here in New England, not to mention the cost of lessons and cage time can add up very quickly. Save yourself time and money by giving your kids what they need to work on their game at home. Our friends at 78 Sports can help you put together the perfect at-home training setup. Whether you want to start small with just a tee and a net or looking to set up a full cage with turf and a pitching machine, they have you covered. And I've used their stuff before. I've seen their facilities. They definitely cover everything. The team at 78 Sports design and install hundreds of at-home and commercial sports training facilities, so let them help you find the perfect setup for your space. Visit the 78 Sports website at 78sports.com. That's S-E-V-E-N-T-Y, the number eight, sports.com. For a limited time only, by just mentioning Back to the Futures, you'll receive a 10% discount off your order. That's S E V E N T Y number eight sports.com. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. And now we've talked about the championship last year and the previous, the year before and this year, you've been there for three years in Nashville. What's the relationship like with Kyle Jackson? Oh, it's, it's great. Um, K Jax, he's a great coach. And, uh, this year we definitely got like a lot a lot closer obviously being my third year and um i'm just thankful he was the he's the coach over there i think that he's a, he is a really good coach and i get along with i get along with him really well and um yeah i'm thankful that he was the coach 
because he's a, he's a great guy and a great father and a great coach. And from the manager to the all the way to the top of the organization in the Futures League, it's clear that the owners care so much about these teams, mm-hmm. and no one is better at showing that than John Creedon, who's got two teams. Yeah. And the way that he divides his time is is perfect. It's equal. He loves both Nashville and Worcester so much. What does it mean to have that involvement from ownership and see that passion each and every day when you're out there playing? Oh, it's great. I um, I actually got the chance to talk, talk to John Creed a few times throughout this season, and he actually talks to the players too, like just a little bit, like as just a hey, like how's it going, stuff like that. And I thought I thought that's really cool too because, you know, it's it's nice to get a little feedback from the owner, like hey, like good job tonight, just those little things. Like he's he he gets it. So he's a really nice guy and I'm thankful for him to be the owner because obviously he's a great, he's a great owner. And um, yeah, I hope he keeps doing what he's doing because he's, he's doing great things in Nashua and in Worcester. Yeah. The Creedons are doing great things. Cam cook has done great things for you guys yep. over the last couple of years. What What's your relationship like with him? Obviously he he's very close with all the players and the, and the guys that he brings in. What What's your relationship like there? Um, Definitely have a great relationship with Cam. I'd say. Um, he's when, in my first year, when I had first met him, true. I mean, I didn't really talk to him that much just because, I mean, it's just, I'm just a new player and he's a GM. So I wasn't, but as, as I was able to go to national, my second and third year, we definitely got closer and, um, yeah, he's a, he's a great GM and he's, he's personal to, or he's like personal to us too. He played for the silver Knights not that long ago. You know, when say we were on like a rough patch of games, he he'd come and talk to the team, you know, after the, one of the games, saying, "Hey, like let's just, you know, let's just get it together a little bit. It's a long season, fellas. Like he's he's very understanding, and he kind of has been in our shoes before, so he's very relatable when you talk to him as a player. So he's definitely a great GM, and he's doing great things in Nashville as well." Yeah, and then you talk about Cam, and you talked about him previously playing for the team and now part of the organization. Another person that did that last year was an assistant coach, a pitching coach, and Noah Walker, who was actually the hero of Game 3 of the 2022 mm-hmm. championship. What was it like having him go from, you know, your your guys' hero in 2022 to a, on the sidelines, especially for you who played with him? Um, It was definitely tough because he – he was, he's still like our age. He's still my age too. So I obviously, I wanted him to play because I loved when he was pitching out there, just fired up the team, got outs, you know, you got to love those guys. And, um, you know, I, I'm actually really close to Noah. It, it was, it was very cool to have him on the sideline too. Obviously I wished he was on the bump, but it was, it was great to have him on the sideline too. He definitely helped out. Um, even K Jacks, with some of the rotation who, who fits better in this spot. Um, and he, he helped just throughout the whole entire team. He was, got close to a lot of the players and he's just a great person. And um, it was great to have him on the side, on the on the sideline this year as a coach. And switching gears a little bit this summer, you got the opportunity to play in the summer rivalry classic and support the Kelly Robin foundation at polar park. What was that experience like? that experience was, was, was great. Um, just to play in the, the foundation, a foundation game is just obviously a blessing. And, um, to be able to wear the Red Sox, Red Sox jersey was, was incredible. And just to play the whole game at Polar Park, it was just a bunch of great things that day. And I just feel blessed to be a part of it. Not only did you play in the game, you also won MVP of the game. How'd you manage to do that? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, uh, how I won MVP probably was, it was a 2-2 game in the top of the 10th, and they had a runner on third, one out, and it was a line drive to me in right field, and I threw him out at home to keep the game tied, and then the next inning, I, um, got a single and then came around and scored, and, uh, I had a stolen base, too two walks but it was I, I just played my butt off end of the story played played hard um knew we were only you know we were gonna play that we just one game so got to leave it all out there and uh i was able to help my team win so. saw the 192 at bats from the summer payoff in that one game <laughs> right so 
I had a lot of I had a lot of reps going into that game. Before we return to Back to the Futures, we want to share a message from our friends at Zorian Back Company. Rob Zorian started the company Zorian Back Company in 2003, literally out of the trunk of his car in Davie, Florida. Within two years, he was selling his wood bat line to Major League Baseball and continues to manufacture the highest grade wood bats for Little League all the way up to the majors. Rob Zorian, founder and president of Zorian, says, I started the company in 2003 to service all baseball players in the United States and beyond. And after 19 years, our mission has not changed. We are very excited to have the opportunity to work with the Futures League and wish all of our players and coaches a healthy and successful season ahead. For more information about Zorian, visit their website, zorianbats.com. Zorian, America's baseball brand. Now, back to Back to the Futures. And transitioning to college, you had an excellent career at Eastern Nazarene, and that held true last season, hitting 302. How have you enjoyed your time there? ENC has been great. Um, I've definitely learned a lot, a lot about myself and a lot about my game since transferring to ENC. I definitely think uh, just a chapter in my life that um, is full of learning and just trying to get better. And uh, ENC, we have we had a great team last year, and um, my coach, the coach at ENC, just recently got the job at SNU. So uh, that's that's new. And um, but it, all all together, ENC has been great to me. Not just the school and and baseball. So yes. So we talked about it off the top and me and Matt did a little research before you jumped on and we went on your Twitter and saw that you're in the transfer portal and you mentioned a lead off the top, but now for the fans, any leads in the transfer portal, Shane? <laughs> yes. Um, I'm, I'm working my butt off right now trying to go to SNU. I, um, I need a waiver to be eligible right away when I get there and that is taking a while. So they're working on the waiver right now and I should know within the next five to 10 days if I'll be eligible right away, if I um, go to SNU. And if I am eligible right away, then that's where I'll be going. So uh, Southern New Hampshire University. So that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm working for right now. All right. This is official back to the futures plea to the NCAA. Get Shane a waiver. Let's go to move him to SNU. You heard the man. You heard him. But speaking of SNU, well, I have actually a couple of questions here, but the the first one, following your coach, uh, what has your coach meant to you? And was that an easy decision saying, I'm going to follow this guy wherever he goes? Um, it's kind of an easy decision because, um, he, he, he was recruiting me when I was like a junior in high school. And even for a D3 coach, that's, you know, that's pretty early. And he really liked me, and he he was coming to my basketball games when I was in high school. And uh, when I went to NEC, he showed me, you know what I mean? He showed me many different things, and I was able to develop a lot when I was playing for him. And um, he this is act this will actually be the third school that I'll I'll be going uh, to with with him as the baseball coach. So it almost just feels like a last ride too, with with him and. Um, he he's meant everything he's meant he he's an unbelievable person coach shank and uh and he uh, just a great coach he loves his players he, he's always had my back he's taught me so many things in the game and it's just i want to i want to finish my college career with him he's the guy that you want to go to warfare uh war for and uh i'm just truly thankful for him because he's an outstanding coach and a great person and he has my back so I'm just working on that to go and try and play for him again. So, yeah, that's great, and that's super important to develop those relationships, especially you know for your baseball career, trying to continue to develop under the same person. Yes. And one more follow up about Southern New Hampshire here: that roster is loaded with Silver Knights, loaded with Silver yep. Knights. Did that factor into your decision at all? Uh, def- it definitely, it definitely made it easier because I was like, wow, I'm gonna be able to play with multiple guys on my summer team and um Nashua's Nashua's the kind of team where it's like we they've had some local kids and a lot of the local kids stay on the Nashua team for two to three years so guys like Kyle Levine guys like George Welch who obviously isn't at SNU anymore but Zach Gitchier um Nate Nader Walker is going into SNU so they're all they're all going to be Silver Knights guys and they're SNU guys so I was 
I mean, just going to play with them again is that'd be great because we've already played together and we already know each other. So that that'd be great. And you just touched upon it. You started at New England College. What was it like the first time in the portal? Uh it's interesting because I didn't really know much about the portal at the time. Here's here's one thing. So that the reason why I'm not eligible to go to SNU right away is because I've already transferred from one D three school to another D three school. And I didn't know I didn't know about the only one transfer rule. That's apparently a rule where you can only transfer once from a four year school to a four year school. So I didn't really know that. So whenever when I was still at NEC, I like signed a waiver just so that um a coach could talk to me. And I basically just talked to Coach Hank again, and then he recruited me to ENC. I was talking to uh, Rhode Island College, too, because they had, they had like, an up-and-coming program at the time. But I was still just basically talking to only uh, Coach Hank and then just went to ENC. But, uh, I, I mean, I, I would be interested to see what the portal had to offer then, but I didn't – I hadn't really done much yet. So I kind of just still wanted to play for the coach that – I thought was going to take my game to the next level and make me a, a stronger man and everything like that. So I just thought that was the best decision to go and play with him at ENC. And I, I pulled the trigger on it. And we've already talked about it a little bit at SNHU. You're going to have a few guys that you already know. You're going to see a coach that you already know, but what are you looking forward to the most? Hmm. Tough question. There's a lot of things I'm looking forward to if I uh if everything goes smoothly. So probably looking forward to the most is just meeting the team. I uh I love building relationships with my teammates. I think that's one of the best parts about baseball is just getting closer with your teammates and building a a better bond so that oh at all we almost just play better on the field just because we're we're that close. You know what I mean? It's some some of the best teams have the best chemistry too. So. I, I can't wait to meet some of the guys on the team and just, you know what I mean? Build a relationship with them and work my butt off with them and practice and do sprints with them and just anything, you know? So it just build a bond, build a bond with my teammates and uh, get settled in, just get settled in. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. And how do you stay ready in the off season? Obviously fall balls, fall ball, but even in the winter, how do you stay ready and get ready for the spring? Um, I I got to live in the gym so gym 4 or 5 days a week. I got a strict uh workout routine and then um just eating a lot of food, trying to put on some LBs. Uh a little treadmill action. I um uh, using weighted balls, throwing, doing some bands and stuff. So um I'm not I'm not hitting a crap ton right now, but I'm working on the other stuff. I'm working on my body, so but probably hit like once once a week, once, twice a week, three times a week, and then just be lifting and just kind of move my arm around, not do anything too crazy with my arm, but just keep it nice and loose and work on it, get it stronger. So that, that's what I'm doing right now. And playing a college sport is no joke. It takes a lot of, you know, time management, takes a lot of effort. What is your biggest advice for balancing school, baseball, and life in college? It's a great question. Um, I would just say be where your feet is. That's one thing I can I'd maybe say is that say if, you know what I mean, something's stressing you out from life and you're on the way to baseball practice. Well, you you can't do anything about it while you're at baseball practice, right? You got to you gotta get out of baseball practice and then you got to do something about it. So just kind of be where your feet are most of the time. If you're, if you got a lot of crap to do later in the day, but right now you have class, just be where class is where like that's going to come up, you know, just try to be where your feet are and be present and then work on, work on whatever problems there is from there or whatever you need to do. Just a little bit of time management. You're definitely going to have to learn time management in college, but just be where your feet are, be present. And uh, that's, that's my only advice. Going even a little bit further back, you are from Londonderry, New Hampshire. What was your time like there? Uh, Londonderry High School was definitely interesting. Um, met a lot of great friends there. Uh, definitely liked it. Played basketball and baseball. Um, 
had a lot of fun playing basketball there. Uh, I loved, I loved my coach and then definitely had a lot of fun playing baseball at, uh, Londonary too. A lot of great, a lot of great teammates. Um, yeah, I just, it was a great time and, uh, thankful for it. And Londonary, New Hampshire, obviously, you know, you hear the New Hampshire part of it and how easy of a process was that to get to Nashua based on location and, and just based on where you were? Um, I don't think it, I, maybe it made it just a little bit easier just because I'm from Londonderry, but it still took me a while to get on the team. I, um, it's not the easiest really to get on a futures league team for like either a freshman or sophomore in college, unless you go to a great college, you know? So I, um, I still kind of worked my butt off just to try to get on the team. And I was kind of always texting my coach saying, Hey, can you text, can you text Cam Cook, can you text Cam Cook, all this stuff just trying to get on the team and eventually it worked out and maybe me being from London Dairy is why he was like, Oh, this is the kid that's going to be here tomorrow. So I can't grab a kid that's all the way across the country. I'll, I'll just bring the kid that's going to be here tomorrow. So maybe, maybe that helps, but um, yeah, it was, it's yeah. And what is your advice to the players thinking about playing summer ball? My advice would to definitely be put, play summer ball because I just think, especially, I would say especially for a hitter because I think that you get so many at bats and reps throughout the summer, especially if you're in really like that main rotation on a summer on a summer baseball team. You play for even like a D three guy too. Like I played more games this summer for the Silver Knights than I did all my D three season collegiate season this year. So it's almost a whole another season and some. So if you want to, if you're if you really want to get better and you know get your reps in and get tons of reps and hopefully go into that off season feeling really well and get a lot of more at bats than your competitors then i think then the i think uh, a summer league is is definitely needs to be in there in in the summer because i just think you get so many reps you get to meet so many people you get to size yourself up against you know people from other colleges you know, you really just learn a lot about yourself and your game in summer league in the summer league. Yeah, and and you just mentioned it kind of for other people, but for you specifically, how do you believe summer ball has impacted your career? I think it's impacted my career greatly. I think that I I I couldn't imagine really seeing myself right now without summer ball throughout my college career. That's how much I think it it means to me and I think that's how much um it's gotten me better because I I've played so many games for the Silver Knights that you know what I mean I can't I can't get any of those obviously any of those back. So I've I've learned throughout so all of those games, the playoff games, the you know what I mean, the eighth game of the week, the first game of the week. I've just I've learned a lot about playing in the Futures League and playing for the Silver Knights. Just a, a lot about myself and I just think that's that's a like necessity if you want to you know take it to the next level in baseball. So, but I've I've learned a lot about myself. And now to wrap it up, the question that we ask everybody: What is your all-time favorite baseball memory? Ooh. Um, <laughs> I gotta go. Twenty twenty-two futures league champion. Futures. That's us. I gotta go with it. That's that's probably my all time ba- favorite baseball memory, for many reasons. Um, just catching the last out, in the in the uh, for for the season was was a great feeling. Feeling honestly, I can't really describe, but just just becoming a Futures League champion was probably the greatest memory I have with with my team. Uh, it was just the game, the location in Burlington, Vermont, all those people there. You know, we were that team the 2022 silver knights were they weren't weren't liked by their uh competitors so it just felt it just felt that much sweeter just taking home the title and you know I, i'm sure I'll, i'm sure almost every guy on that team will say the same thing too one of their favorite baseball memories has got to be that so what an all around just unbelievable experience and i'll just something i i'll never forget no matter how hard i try so 
Yeah, it was an incredible team, an incredible season, and it ended in a title for you guys, obviously. And what a what a baseball memory it was. Yeah. Shane, this has been a fantastic episode. Thank you so much for joining us here for the season opener of season eight. We wish you the best. And again, we're praying that the NCAA comes through with that waiver and hopefully you will be a penman very soon. Thank you very much. I hope both of you guys have a great day. I appreciate your time. Thanks, man. You too. And this has been the season eight opener of Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the Futures League. Stay tuned for episodes all off season long. We have new episodes coming out. I'm oh, sorry. You can find us on Apple. <laughs> there it is, the Silver Knights hat. You can find us on Apple Mus- Apple Podcast, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see y'all soon. Woo.